Hey everybody, I'm Jordan. I'm Lex from PDQ.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about setting up resource monitoring with our with our products. Why in the world would you want to do that, man? Uh, I was told that I had to. Actually, it's a pretty good thing. Yeah. But I guess for everyone at home, if you want a bit more insight into what your computers are doing, this is... Uh, you know, keep track of services running, uh, ports that are open, things like that. Uh, yeah, for those that know me, this may surprise them, but I'm going to do this with PowerShell. Whoa. Uh, I which love is the PowerShell. New, new territory for me. Uh, the... PowerShell we wrote, we put up on our GitHub, the bonus content. As you can see on this so, link here, there should be just a, a clicky link right below. Clicky. Cl clicky link. Not up there, yeah. down below. Okay. Yeah, click on that, and you can read through, and you can kind of come up with your own. Uh, but the main takeaway is there is no one-size-fits-all for, for resource monitoring. You have to decide what you want to track, and then you can write PowerShell for that. So this should give you some ideas, yeah, help, yeah. You, help you add your own own spin to it, and then from there, hopefully you can you can build it out to exactly what you need. We're hoping to spark some ideas. Yep. Okay, what's the first thing we're going to monitor and how you go about it? All right, so the first thing that we went about is uh, we want to know if certain services are running. Right. Um, and so, uh, the, the basically what you have to do is you have to go through, search for what you want, grab that data, and you have to put it into a hash table. Okay. Because the hash table will return it in a readable format for us, or for, so for inventory. That's what our PowerShell is going to do Yeah, for so our PowerShell is going to go through, it's going to grab the data we want, It'll put it into the readable format, and then at the end, it will import everything back into inventory into one, one collection. Uh, so you see here, these top parts, these are just parameters. We'll go into those when we go into the actual product and what it's in there for. <clears throat> but the first thing, we're just basically we're grabbing services. Uh, if it doesn't exist, it will just put doesn't exist. If it does exist, it'll let you know if it's running or stopped. So the, the nice thing about this service is we're setting up a variable in inventory, so you can go in and add and remove those as you want. Yep, if you import the XML, it should include those variables for you, so you just have to add the values themselves. Uh, so in our case, we did, like, Notepad and PowerShell. It's probably not really useful for you, but if you like... Uh, Maybe you, even VMware Tools, that's good. VMware one. Tools is a fantastic one for VMs, or any service that you need to know for a fact is either stopped or running. Yep. This will help you track that down. Um, the next part is uh, processes. This one, I went a little bit different about it. As we're grabbing specific processes, we same thing. We have a variable within our product where you can mm -hmm. specify the processes. And the way it works is if the process is running, it's going to return the process ID to you. If the process is not running, then it's just going to return a value of zero. And that way we're not comparing a, in, a yeah. string with an integer. Yeah. They're both, uh, they're both so integers. Process ID good, zero, bad. Bs, that means the yeah. process is not running. I guess, yeah. Yeah, and then the next uh, just... Typical stuff here, mm -hmm. uh, CPU usage. There's just PowerShell command that's for that. That comes back as a, a number, mm -hmm. easy enough. And then uh, hard disk, this is for physical disk only, okay. not for logical disk, where you can grab things like temperature, read errors, operational status. Basic disk health. Yeah, whatever you yeah. want to look for. There's a lot in there. There's a blog by Brock uh, where he breaks down a lot. You can do with that one. I'd recommend looking at that one. And then we also do logical, uh, where we go and we find things like available space or utilization and things like that. And we do the same thing with memory. Oh, okay. All right. This last one was one we we worked on, and it works pretty well. It, but it's, it, you might want to make it your own. I did things that based on the way I wanted to see it. But uh, we're going out. We're finding events. There's a lot of information in those events. Yeah. You I'm, could. I'm grabbing what I want to grab. So basically what we did is this event specifically is for login events. We want to know if someone has logged into the, that machine within your last scan. Okay. Uh, so... What it's going to go do, it will find everyone has a login type of 2 or 10, which is local or remote. Okay. And then it will uh, remove duplicates because we don't care how many times someone has logged in, just if they have logged yep. in. And then it will create a list of everyone that has logged in and return that. Uh, so you can get multiple entries or no entries on that one. Uh, so it's just a kind of a, a quick security one. There's probably more in depth you can go with that one. That one is just a quick throw, uh, throw in. All right, and then the last part is uh, everything we have is where we throw it into the hash table. Yep. Oh, we also have yeah, ports, right? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Ports I skipped right over. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, the ports we did were like a Windows Update service, but if there are critical ports you have to know are open or closed, just this new object TCP client, mm -hmm. that's going to let you know if an open or closed test and reports back open or closed. We need to show you something, yeah. so we grab stuff we knew it yeah. should be open. Basically what we did is we went to our own Nagio server and said, what are we tracking? And we tried to mimic it with PowerShell. There you go. All right, in the end, this is where as we've been capturing the data. We've been adding it to this hash table. And then we go and we convert the hash table at the very end to a PS custom object, and that's what makes it readable. Uh, you know, when this uh, runs, it's going to put a single string, single line of uh, data 
which is not easy to read for your eyes, but it makes it really easy for us to do work on afterwards. Yeah, so the, the real value of this isn't just to open it up. I guess if there's one or two columns you want to look for, you mm -hmm. can have those first on your, on your list, mm -hmm. and you can have that open up. But if you want to do something that has all this information, that's something we'll probably go out in a, in a future video. Yeah. All right, so if we look now that we have the PowerShell, all we did is we built a PowerShell scanner out of this. So we're going to go to our scan profiles. Surprise, surprise, we called it monitoring. And we did call it monitoring. Uh, all I did was point to the PS1 that we got from the, the GitHub. Mm -hmm. And then you can see here we're specifying services. That's the name of the services. Processes, same thing. Ports, yep. same thing. And then there's another option in there that we don't have included in this one where you can set a time frame for your login events. So uh, I have a default in there, which I can't remember off the top of my head. It's 15 minutes. 15 minutes. If you wanted to only know within the last hour or anything, you would set the time frame in there, and it would look that that much further back into your events. Yep. Uh, the other thing to look at is the uh, variables that those are referencing, and that's under options, variables. Yep. And there's is our ports. Ports, oh. services, and processes, all right there. And all we did is we separated them, com separated, mm -hmm. and we'll go through and we'll run against each list, or each one of the lists. So you don't, you're not limited to... One process, one service. As many as you need, just separate them by a comma. If there is a space in there, you might want to put quotes around it just so PowerShell doesn't read the space. Yep, yep. I mean, it will read it, but it puts it together as one, one, one entry. Yeah, you might get results you're not yeah. expecting. All right, so scanning that, the more you add, the longer it's going to take to scan. Good point. Uh, it, it took, I don't know, it took maybe four minutes to run that the first time we ran it. Instead of... Watching that slowly go across, we'll just kind of pull up here so they can see the results we get. First thing, timestamp, just so you know when it ran. I just want to point this out, too. You might have a bunch of things that have run in here. Yep. Just make sure you select monitoring. Okay. Absolutely. All right. And so you can see here, these are all of our results. Our results are results. Mm, mm -hmm. I like resorts. Resorts is delicious. So we have uh, services. Uh, the ID, as you can see, we don't have Notepad or PowerShell running on this one. And CPU utilization, zero seems low. Yeah. But who am I to judge? We have 94 total processes, so all the information is in here, but as you can see, that's not real readable. Yeah. We'll actually make a video yeah. and show you how to, well, make it readable and yeah. do some auto remediation later. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So hopefully if you follow these steps, this can help you get started. You can start gathering all the data, and then we'll have another video coming soon where we can show you how to use, use that it. data. Yeah. All right. For PDQ.com, I'm Jordan. And I'm Lex. Thanks for watching.